Today I want to talk about your calendar. Well, of course, it's a very important tool in your practice. I've never met a lawyer who doesn't look at their calendar each day, if not many times a day. There are calendars out there on the web, in software packages, blotters on your desk, whiteboards on your wall, many ways to keep your calendar. And there's no one right way. It's going to depend on your practice area. It's going to depend on your own preferences. Those of you who have had a number of years of experience know what works for you. Those of you starting out, I encourage you to experiment with different kinds of calendars. You can even go to an office supply store and walk down the hall and look at the different types of calendars that are available. Ultimately, though, I think we rely on our computer calendar, particularly if we're working with others in the office where that computer is networked. And so the calendar can be shared with others. Very, very important for me, anyway, to recommend to our members that if you are working in an office with others, that that calendar be networked. I'll even go so far as to say you should use an internet calendar, such as MSN or Yahoo or Google, with the proviso that you not put confidential information on the calendar. Abbreviate names, or use cause numbers, or other types of codes so that you're not exposing any client information. But the internet provides a very powerful tool to enable everyone in the office to share calendar information. Here in LOMAP, we talk a lot about Outlook, only because Outlook is usually on your computer, used to varying degrees, and it indeed has a calendar and an ability to have multiple calendars for different purposes. The calendar should include not only where you need to be, of course, but what you need to do. Make time for the projects that are important for you. I find in my own work, once I've budgeted time to do a pro project, such as writing an article or preparing a CLE, I feel better about it. I feel like I'm on top of that project. And I've scheduled it in a way that if I'm not able to do it on that particular day or time, I do have built-in flex time so that I can move that appointment with myself to another day. Now I'm holding in my hand an iPod Touch which is not a smartphone, but it does synchronize with Outlook, and I'm able to see my calendar and my contacts and my email anywhere. Indeed, I'm sure those of you looking at this video now could do the same thing. But it not only gives you the mobility to know what's going on outside your office, but it's also part of your disaster recovery planning. Think about it. You come to your office one day and there's yellow tape around it. It's a crime scene. Or maybe there's been a small fire, but the fire department isn't allowing anyone into the building until they determine that it's safe. You still have your information in your pocket. And so you're able to make contact with those who need to hear from you about a delayed meeting or appointment, etc. Keep in mind that all of our members of the Washington State Bar Association are in the lawyer directory, which is easily accessible through your smartphone. So you need not necessarily have all of those contacts on your phone entered individually. That would include, of course, judges as well. Through the court's websites, you can locate people as well. So think expansively about what's available on the web through your smartphone. But also remember that synchronizing with your particular calendar is very, very important.